Hey guys! Okay, so today's video is going to be <laughs> me doing riddles because I love riddles and that, that was the end of my sentence. I didn't want to add anything else. So let's get started. Eight riddles and short detective stories to test your logic. Okay, we invite you to get together with the whole family and try to solve all the riddles together. See, what if I was an orphan? Which door is safe? All right, so there's a door of lava. There's a- Oh, hell no. That clown looks psychotic. All right. One morning, little Mary got trapped in a castle in Costa Rica. Hold up. Where- where's your parents? There were four doors, but only one led to freedom? Oh, hell. Nah, little Mary ain't getting out ever. He's stuck, stuck. The doors opened up to the following. Lava that would immediately melt anyone? I don't know if I can say the K-I-E-R on YouTube. I heard that you can't, so I'm gonna say an executionist clown that would beat any person to death, a deadly frost that would freeze her at once, cops that would shoot any man or woman indiscriminately. Which door should she choose? Okay, so little Mary is little. I'm gonna go with number four. She should choose because little Mary's a little girl. The answer, the cops would shoot any man or woman, but Mary isn't an adult. Okay. The Eiffel Tower. Guy... Guy de Maupassant hated the Eiffel Tower, so every day he had lunch in the one place where it couldn't be seen. I mean, you could just move? Like, what was that place? I don't know. I mean, you would have to be in the tower, I guess, so that you don't see it, you're inside of it. But why would you be inside of the tower if you hate it? So I'm gonna say inside answer. He ate in the restaurant that was located at the base of the tower. A murder number three, a murder in a sauna. Okay, four friends regularly visited the sauna together. They, oh, y'all got money, money. Oh, all right, all right. Jack, a musician, took an iPod with him to listen to music. Steve, a banker, took a thermos to drink out of. Okay, um, Patrick and Michael were lawyers and took documents to read. One day, Patrick was found dead. All right, so um, this is Patrick. Okay, he was murdered by a sharp object. Yikes. Policemen came immediately and conducted an investigation. They found nothing. How could this have happened? I mean, I don't know. If they ain't find nothing, you want me to you want me to dig something up? Yeah, four friends, my ass. One of them wanted you dead. Um, okay, let me stop. Are these are these details actually important? A musician. He could have bought a clarinet and like shoved it down his throat. <laughs> Steve, a banker, he could have like shoved coins in his mouth or something, and then Patrick and Michael were lawyers. Plot twist, what if, what if Steve was supposed to be winning a case that Patrick was running, right? But then Patrick was like, I'm sorry, like you were found guilty. So then now Steve has like a vendetta against Patrick and that's why he made it in the name of the law. Patrick was murdered by Steve. Oh, I was riding the money with Steve. Oh, wow. Who brought an ice shard in his thermos. Oh my God, why? Wow. So there's like no explanation to why he why he did this he just brought a shard and was like today's the day <laughs> okay number four an angry wife where have you been okay pete called his wife and said that he would be home at eight he came home at 805 they had no special plans but still the wife was angry because of his being late why did she get so mad i mean maybe she had a little surprise for like those five minutes and then he ruined it pete should have come home at 8 p.m but he came home at 805 a.m the next day Ooh. Ooh, Pete, what you been doing? Oh, okay, Mr. James is dead. Who did it? Okay, so there's Sophia, John, Sarah, and Jack. Okay, well, before I make assumptions, let me read. Mr. James was found dead in his room. Okay, the room had no window and the door was locked. The only four people who had a key to the room were questioned. Sophia the maid, I came to wake up Mr. James. When I saw him dead, I screamed. Hmm. Sophia and Jack look real happy in that picture. What y'all smiling at? Hmm. Y'all in cahoots? John the butler, when I heard the scream, I ran into the room, turned on the light, and saw Mr. James with a knife in his neck. Sarah the governess, I rushed up alongside John. When he turned on the light, the room was all bloody. Jack the cook, I was prepping breakfast and didn't see anything. Okay, so Jack is on that. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't saying nothing. Okay. See, I find it odd that everybody has their own alibi or their own individual story of how they found Mr. James, except for Sarah. She has to piggyback off of john wait so john was like i ran to the room turned on the light and then the governess said i rushed up alongside john i ran into the room turned on the light and saw mr james with a knife in his neck okay so it's either john or the governess because they but then again it's always the wife or it's always the maid that murders someone i w came to wake up mr james when i saw him dead i screamed 
Okay, so it was Sophia. If the room was dark, she wouldn't have seen Mr. James lying there unless she already knew it. I mean, that's under the assumption that John and the governess were telling the truth about turning on the light, that they weren't lying about that. So it could really be any of them, except for Jack. Jack is the cool one, but I guess. Okay, let's do one more and this will be it. A man has been shot in a car. There were no traces of gunpowder on his clothes. That meant that a murderer wasn't inside the car while shooting him. This is so vulgar. <laughs> there were no bullet holes in the car. Besides, all the doors and windows windows were closed. How could they have murdered him? Well, I mean, you look at the car, convertible, shot him up real quick from up above or something, and then put it back. The answer, the man was in a convertible. Okay, well, that's, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.